Hello fellow YouTubers, Bear Prepper here. Today we're going to make green tomato piccalilli relish. Now you can use the recipe in the complete book of home preserving by Paul. And uh, I've done actually four batches here. So what you see in these pots is I have chopped cabbage, chopped green tomatoes, chopped onion, chopped red bell pepper, chopped green bell pepper, and some salt. And what you do is you, I used my um, food mixer, of course, made a mess all over the place, but hey, I, what would be cooking without making a mess? But you chop them all up in your food processor. I haven't made this recipe for about 17 years because I haven't had access to green tomatoes. But I bought my food processor specifically for that, my Oster, just to make this because I loved it so much. Now, you can adjust your ingredients if you have more green tomatoes, then you can reduce your cabbage. If you have less green tomatoes, you can increase your cabbage. And like I said, this is four batches, and I'm going to put this out on the counter overnight. And what's going to happen is the salt is going to draw out the moisture and it almost kind of crisp it um, the ingredients but it just draws out that excess moisture so that you can replace that back in with the pickling sauce so we're gonna let that set out and we'll see you in the morning so I'm getting my lids ready here and uh, of course I'm getting my jars ready now since you're water bath canning you must sterilize your jars if you were pressure canning that's not necessary then in the morning you take your strainer and uh, dump of your mixture in the strainer and then you really want to rinse it well and get all of that salt off your product you know move it around get it really good because you've put a lot of salt in there and you don't want to spoil your final results by having too much. Isn't that beautiful with the little bits of red pepper in there? Now these are not hot peppers. These are red bell peppers. You can put some hot peppers in if you want it. But it's going to make it a much spicier mixture. And so I'm getting ready to do the second batch rinsing. Then once it's completely rinsed you want to really press it good to get any additional water out because you want that vinegar mixture to be absorbed into it so you, you want to squeeze it out and get it ready to go in the pot now we're making our spice bags now what we have in here is we have pickling spice mustard seed and coarsely chopped or finely grated uh, ginger I like to do the finely grated because I like the stronger flavor chopped um, you don't get as strong a flavor and so I've just got some uh, they're called flour sack towels and I've cut them into little squares and so I'm going to tie this all together and these are going to be our little spice bags that we're gonna throw in our pot and it's really simple to tie these together. Just grab two corners and tie it. And then once you tie that, you'll notice the ends lay over the other two corners. So you want to grab all of that as a big group and tie it together. Very simple. Just make sure your bag is much bigger than your spices. Otherwise, you're going to have a difficult time getting it to tie. And then we're just going to take that and we're going to get dizzy as we walk on over to our pot. And we're going to drop it in our pot. And with that, you are now going to add your vinegar. And we use white vinegar in Piccalilli. I don't recommend using the cider vinegar, but you can if you like that stronger flavor. And water. And then we're going to add our sugar. Now this sugar I just brought back from the retreat. It was packed without a mylar, without bay leaf, without oxygen absorber. Now all of you know you never store sugar with an oxygen absorber. Um, what I did was I packaged three buckets, one with mylar, one without mylar, 
and one with an oxygen absorber. And I did that so that you could see what happens. This is one that had no mylar and no O2 absorber. And as you can see, the sugar is fine. It scoops out rather easily. You know, of course, it's, you know, stiff because it's been sitting for, well, we'll show you how long it's been sitting for in just a second here. And I love these tops for these kind of things. And that was from March of 2010. So in two years, it didn't harden up, and that's been out in the heat of that shed. So now we're also going to add our turmeric. And the turmeric is what gives it the nice little color. And then you're going to mix it in really good. Make sure you get that spice bag pushed down into the liquid so that everything can start releasing. And yes, there's a lot in this pot and it's really heavy because you've taken all the water out of it, so it's a very dense product. I think I have three large heads of cabbage and, I don't know, 20 cups of green tomatoes in here. Six green peppers, six red peppers, seven onions, something like that. So these are quite large batches. You know, with the work you gotta put in to pick a lily, go ahead and make yourself a huge batch. Now we're gonna bring it to boil and uh, we're going to keep that boiling for approximately five minutes at a full rolling boil. And then we're going to reduce the heat and make it a little bit lower boil. And we're going to let that cook for about 20 minutes until it starts to thicken. I don't necessarily care for it to be thick. So I only cook mine for about 10 minutes, but cook it for 20, try that, see what you think. I like mine more of a pickle consistency rather than a relish consistency and not quite as sweet. So I don't concentrate the juices down as much, but do as you please, do what you think your taste will suit. Isn't that a beautiful color? Just love it. And now in one of the batches, I'm actually going to add some of Bobby's, yeah, scorpion peppers. An eighth of a teaspoon in a half a batch. So it's actually two recipes. And I don't think it'll be too much, but we shall see. So then you just ladle it into your hot jars. I like to use a slotted spoon and not put the juices in. I like to try to get as much relish as possible. And then once I get up to within one half an inch of the rim, then I will go ahead and add juices to make sure that it's completely up there. And don't forget, once you've added the juices, you need to make sure that you remove the air bubbles and you, I usually just stick each jar about four times. And that's usually enough to get rid of any air bubbles that are in there. And then check again. Make sure it hasn't settled. And add to within a half inch of the rim again. Wipe the top of the rim. And that's just simply the flat surface on the top of the jar. Is all you need to wipe. Don't worry about the sides. Honestly, it'll come off in the boiling water bath. Put your hot lids. They should be in simmering water, not in boiling water. And then put your rings on finger tight. Depending on your strength, if you're a strong woman, finger tight. If you're a weak woman, kind of twist it a bit. If after you've done your first batch, you see a lot of juices in your water bath canner, or your pressure canner, that means you need to tighten those lids just a hair more. If you get exploding jars, then you've probably put your lid on too tight. Or you've brought your temperature up too fast or down too fast. Those are those lids that you can put in the fridge. 
So now since we've got a lot of pickling juice left over, let's make some pickled eggs. These lids I found and was going to be using, but as you see, they've got scratches in them. Once that plastic has been scratched, especially with an acidic food, they will rust and ruin your product. So do not use them. Throw them out and get new ones. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes that happens when you've got them in your little storage area. And then you just fill. I have a half gallon jar here and I filled it up with, I think I've got 16 eggs in there. And I'm simply going to pour my pickling juice over top. Let these sit for about a week and they're ready. Now, these are a totally different flavor than the dill ones that we had at the meetup. I like the dill ones we had at the meetup a little better, but these aren't bad at all. A little sweeter, not so much um, a breakfasty one, but would be great as an egg salad. And there you go. We have 32 pints and a jar of pickled eggs. Not bad for a day's work. Blessings.